All right, so moments ago, Tim Cook got on stage and gave us that good morning and welcome back to Apple Park that we have been waiting all year for. And also they launched a bunch of new products. Now I'm not wasting any time on this one. The products we saw announced were the Mac Studio and Studio Display, the new iPad Air with M1, the new iPhone SE3, and some additional bonuses like a green iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, Space Gray keyboard with Touch ID, a trackpad, and a mouse. But the one we're focusing on right now is the new Mac Studio and Studio Display. So this is the computer that we've all been waiting for. Just like the rumor suggested, this chunky version of a Mac Mini was unveiled as a bridged gap in the Mac lineup. This one is coming equipped with the M1 Max and the new M1 Ultra chip, up to 20 core CPU and 64 core GPU, up to 128 gigs of memory and eight terabytes of storage, and complete with 10 gigabit ethernet, Thunderbolt 4, HDMI, and an SD card slot. Overall, a lot of really great pros to this device. Now every Apple product has a headliner feature, right? And this Mac Studio is really no different. Coming equipped with an M1 Ultra chip on the upgraded version that Apple explained is essentially just two M1 Max chips put together with some custom Apple hardware, of course, to function as one single chip. Now this chip is good for a lot of reasons, but the most notable comparison was that it could achieve 5.3 times faster speeds than the leading 27 inch iMac. And by the way, they're comparing this to the iMac because this, paired with the studio display, of course, basically is their replacement to the 27 inch iMac, which they've silently removed from the site following the event. A bonus about the Mac Studio is that it includes two Thunderbolts and an SD card slot directly on the front of the Mac for convenience. This Mac Studio measures out to 19.7 centimeters wide and 9.6 centimeters tall, making it relatively large to sit on a desk and really is supposed to make this bold statement. And there's also a bunch of other features like fitting up to five displays into this thing, which is great, but I'm not sure how many people are actually gonna get the chance considering this Mac Studio base model comes in at 19.99 and the Studio display is 15.99. This is all in US dollars, by the way. So totaling my card in Canada, it was over $5,000 to get both of these, which is why you won't be seeing this review on the channel anytime soon. Now the Mac Studio display is one that I'll make really quick. It's basically Apple's lower cost display meant to be paired with the Mac Studio. It features a 27 inch 5K retina display, a 12 megapixel camera, which is the same as the one on the iPad right now and comes equipped with center stage as well, and six built-in speakers, to support spatial audio. Now made completely out of aluminum, it's 62% thicker than the M1 iMac, but also 20% brighter. On the back, it includes one Thunderbolt 4 port to connect to your Mac with one single cable and then three USB-Cs to connect any other items. And because of that Thunderbolt, it means anything you plug into this display can then connect to your Mac with just one cord. And it's also capable of charging the plugged in Mac up to 92 watts. So there's a lot of great specs packed into this thing making it a great external display for a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio. But then coming at a cost of $15.99 US and $19.99 Canadian, it's sort of a tough pill to swallow. Now both the Mac Studio and the Studio Display are available for pre-order today and are available on Friday, March 18th. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if you're planning on picking this thing up. And if you are, are you pairing it with a new Mac Studio or a Mac Mini? While you're down there, of course, remember to hit that like button because it tells YouTube the videos like this don't suck and hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.